you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. In this problem, we have a collision between the ball and the spring gun. And in that case, we can use the conservation of momentum, which tells us that the total initial momentum will equal the total final momentum, as long as there are no external forces applied in the situation. On the initial side of the equation, we have the ball, whose mass is lowercase m, moving with an initial velocity vi. The spring gun is not moving initially, so it has zero momentum. If we wish, we can include that on the left side by just writing plus zero. And then on the right side, the objects stick together. And so what we can do is actually combine their masses and then multiply by their final velocity. And indeed, in part A, our goal is to find that final velocity, or actually the final speed, of the spring gun after the ball stops in the barrel. Now keep in mind that the ball and the spring gun will be moving together after the collision. And so really, when we calculate this final velocity, it's going to be the value for both the spring gun and the ball, technically. But we can divide both sides of the equation by the term m plus uppercase m. And then we can plug in the known values. Lowercase m is given in grams, so we have to make sure to convert that into kilograms. And then the initial speed of the ball is given as 22 meters per second. The mass of the spring gun is also given in grams, so we'll make sure to convert that into kilograms. And when you compute that, you should get a final speed of exactly 4.4 meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. For part B, we need to examine the energies that are present both before the collision and then after the collision. We know that before the collision, the ball is moving with that speed of 22 meters per second. So we can say that there initially is kinetic energy. But before the collision, this spring is actually relaxed. So there would be no elastic potential energy stored in the spring. So the only energy present initially will be that initial kinetic energy. Now after the ball enters the spring gun and compresses the spring, the energy will be converted into elastic potential energy, which we can symbolize by U.S. But at the same time, the ball and spring gun are moving backwards. Remember, in part A, we had determined the speed of the spring gun and ball after the collision. So there still is movement, and therefore there still is final kinetic energy. Now, the conservation of energy tells us that we can take the final energies and set them equal to the initial energy. And we're actually going to go ahead and solve for this elastic potential energy stored in the spring. So we'll go ahead and subtract the final kinetic energy over to the right-hand side. And then we know that kinetic energy can be represented as one-half times the mass times the initial speed squared. The other kinetic energy will also be one-half. This mass will be the combined mass of the objects, since they're stuck together in the final situation, multiplied by that final speed squared. We can go ahead and plug in the known values for the mass of the ball, the initial speed of the ball, and then the mass of the spring gun as well as its final speed on the right side. And when we crunch that all down, we should get 11.616 joules for the elastic potential energy. So again, that's the energy that's stored in the spring. The question wants the fraction of the initial kinetic energy stored in the spring. So to get that fraction, we can take the energy stored in the spring and simply divide it by the initial kinetic energy. Now, we just figured out the elastic potential energy, so we can plug that into the numerator. And then the initial kinetic energy would simply be this term right here. So that would be 1 half times the mass of the moving ball times the initial speed of that ball. And when we crunch that all down, we should get exactly 0.8. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon. Also subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember, you can send your own question into this email address and I'll do my best to respond to it on YouTube.